Hello, all you lovely monster fuckers, and welcome back to another episode of Monster Prom. Today, we start on the second term endings. So, uh, without further ado, we'll, uh, we'll get on to it. We're obviously going to be starting with Zoe. One player, second term. Short game. Ah, spooky high school. The sweetest years of our lives. Back then, we were young and unafraid. Sometimes reckless, sometimes brilliant, sometimes just stupid, but always willing to live life to the fullest. We were on a wild journey to discover who we really were. Uh, we'll be green. <laughs> and we had yet to experience its ultimate challenge, the monster prom. I remember it clearly, three weeks were left, and as we fantasized about our dream prom dates, we were all scrambling to catch the attention of one of our eight most charismatic classmates. Scott Owl, 21, a werewolf athlete who compensated for his rather small brain with a stupidly huge heart. Miranda Vanderbilt, 19, a sweet mermaid princess who is as cute as she was genocidal. Polly Geist, probably 22, a party ghost with an insatiable hunger for all the wrong things. Damien LaVey, 21, a fearless demon with a taste for destruction and a love of fire. Liam DeLioncourt, 400-something. A hipster vampire whose standoffish demeanor hid the fact he was truly a lovable dork. Zoe, forever? <laughs> An eldritch cutie who went from endless deity of the dark realms to ultimate fangirl. Calculuster Hewlett Packard, version 1.0. <sighs> a library computer who had become a sentient robot ready to experience life to its fullest. And Vera Oberlin, 23. <laughs> A mean, self-made gorgon with a merciless sense of business. It was clear, it had to be one of them, but who? We only had three weeks to choose our prom date, and even more daunting, we only had three weeks to woo them and conquer their heart. But as I already said, we were young and unafraid, and we were ready to start. Welcome to Monster Prom, stupidest pop quiz ever! All minds are rotten, but they're rotten in so many different ways. Worry no more, we're now using our PhD in bullshit to diagnose which kind of deviant sicko you are. Mods, prom, stupidest pop quiz ever, TM, will throw a bunch of absurd questions at you and turn your answers into your character's stats. This way each of you will start by having stats that better reflect your true selves. Let's start. You build a hundred foot statue commemorating an event so a thousand years, archaeologists can learn something about the people of our time. What does the statue represent? That mind-blowing twist in your favorite TV show that clearly changed the life of everyone forever, unlike all that boring stuff they show in the news. Your least favorite political figure being devoured by rabid rhinoceri, which are also covered in badass tattoos. A glorious incident when your friends stopped texting you, for, stopped you from texting embarrassing stuff to your ex while hella drunk. Mind-blowing twist. Which is the coolest mythological creature? This weird creature I drew when I was six, and which is clearly super derivative from other mythological creatures, but it's super cool and it's my OC and my spirit animal, okay? A sphinx, who's super turned up and ready to party, and she wraps all her riddles. She still kills you if you don't answer them correctly, but she wraps the riddles. The invisible hand of the free market. We'll go with the weird creature where I drew when I was six. I drew a lot of weird creatures. It will be a deal breaker for a potential lover. The person uses Internet Explorer. The person likes taste. The person ha hates the outdoors. The person likes manners. The person is mediocre. The person thinks Asuka is the best waifu. I mean, she's a redhead, but... You find a genie in a bottle. You can ask for whatever you want. What do you ask for? Him not to be so cliched. A genie in wishes. So mainstream. Before asking for anything, you try to negotiate up to the free standard wishes. Infinite Confetti, his friendship, to feel truly alive. I don't ask for anything. I drink the genie straight. I drink the genie from the bottle. I can grab my own wishes. Infinite Confetti, sure. Um, sure. <laughs> yeah, to the gym. That day, an epic dodgeball match takes place. Everything seems lost, but you deliver an inspirational speech that fuels your team spirit, leading to a spectacular comeback. You're clearly a natural-born leader. You gain two charm. 
Meanwhile, Zoe seems to have trapped Polly in some sort of eldritch bind and circle. This should be good. Tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me! Girl, where is your chill? I already told you like a million times how I died. Um, yeah, but each time you told me something different. Tried to fuck a toaster, suffocated by good booty, gun salad. I've heard them all. But what's the truth, Polly? Huh? Huh? Hey! It's none of your business. <laughs> no, but it is my hobby. And hobbies matter, Polly. Plus, the fans have a right to know. Fans have a right to leave me the hell alone. Secrets are sexy. If secrets are so sexy, then how come God invented an online encyclopedia, TM? <laughs> what? You're a god. You know that's not true. Now let me out of this binding circle. I've got haunted math next period. Sure, I'll let you out. If you tell me how you really died. Zoe gives you a pleading look. Zoe, uh, Polly gives you a pleading look. Zoe gives you an excited look. As usual, it's up to you to figure out who to help. Polly's right, secrets are sexy, and I'll prove it to you with my new and espionage, you spooky highly classified. Zoe deserves to know the truth, and you te if you tell it to her, Polly, I'll give you a huge bag of cocaine. Hmm. Hmm. Or not lose stats is the thing. Um, hmm. Well, this is obviously creative, but I know it's Polly's. And this is money, but it's Zoe's. Uh, Wow, so you wrote an entire espionage JU? Can I see? Of course you didn't actually write an entire espionage JU. Time to improvise. You reach in your backpack and pull out a manila folder sealed shut with electrical ch tape. Mm -hmm. You mean nipple tape, the sexiest kind of tape. But what's inside? I can't read it. Let me read it. Please, let me read it. I want to read it. Reveal the contents of the folder now, mortal, or I shall turn your skin to bone. Your bones to skin and fashion the quivering amalgam into... Oh, jeez. Uh, I don't know what came over me just now. I'm so sorry. It's okay. You were just overwhelmed by all those sexy secrets. You're right, Polly. I've learned a valuable lesson today. Fan fiction is like jazz. It's really about the formative character moments you don't reveal. Zoe runs off to write a new fanfic, Spooky High? We're leaving you and Polly to get utterly obliterated on Tide Pods. You're getting too fun in one charm. Now we have to make up uh, by... By, uh... Going to Zoe's table and picking her option. It's not like Zoe and Miranda aren't always the perkiest of gals, but they seem extra perky as they skitter around writing things in their, down in notebooks. Doubtless you are admiring my great work, Green. You see, we are now food critics. Zoe has hired me for a magazine, totally a real food magazine. <laughs> it's an honor to have you on board, Your Highness. Zoe holds up a bunch of paper stapled together with doodles and crayons that seem to be ultra truons, with some sparkly scratch and sniff stickers stuck on top. If you are quite and quiet and subservient, you may watch us in our quest to be the f best food critic set ever. I was a little hesitant about founding this very legitimate magazine, since I'm new to eating things other than minds and souls. Mm -hmm. And I usually have my Eden surfs eat for me, but then Zoe and I realized we are the absolute best food critics according to our test audience, which is compromised of Miranda's food surfs. Now watch us create culinary criticisms of mac magic. First up, macaroni and cheese. This food item contains both macaroni and cheese and therefore deserves five stars for this accurate de description. Next, couscous with vegetables. I've never tried it, and the pieces seem way too small to even register in my many mouths. I won't try it either, but the name sounds very, very fancy, so five stars. Here is this microwave. <laughs> ah, yes, this is very shiny and very cubic shape, which are both good qualities for food. Five stars. Here are some french fries. They don't seem to be particularly French. They don't seem particularly un-French either. Oh dear, how will we ever determine their Frenchosity? Psst, easy. That's your specialty. 
Zoe, you should give French fries a French kiss or be the most epic of French fixings to check how good they are at French kitchen and therefore calculate their Frenchosity. Miranda, obviously you're the most qualified to determine this. The only way to establish Frenchosity is to actually go to France. Just send an Eden Surf over to check it out. Give the French a French kiss. <sighs> how do you know about my French themed spooky high AU Le Monstrave? You truly are my number one fan, aren't you, Green? If by my number one fan she means trying to get her getting her tentacles on prom night, then sure. <laughs> if you find them to be sufficiently good kissers, my eldritch compatriot, I will join you in this endeavor. It will be good practice for me when my prince comes along, provided I am not in an enchanted slumber at the time. Yeah. I really feel like people shouldn't be kissing people in any kind of slumber, but that's a separate issue, so I'm just gonna make out with a fried potato now. She does. Yes, I found that kiss to be mo both French and fried. Five stars! Spoiler Five stars. Alert. And you green, rock. maybe you and I can work on other kissing adventures sometime? Heck yeah, and you do. It's called giving butterfly kisses to roast honey roasted butterflies to determine their butterfly factor. Five stars. And then she made out with a potato. Um, sure. Mm, ba -ba -ba. Gym. But the an epic dodgeball match takes place. At one point, you're about to be eliminated by a player from the other team, but suddenly you convince him not to throw the ball at you with a heartfelt, heartfelt speech about the importance of everyone's lives. The player bursts into tears and you take advantage of that moment of weakness, throwing a ball at him. You lose five mercy, a stat that might be useful in Monster Prime sequel, but isn't now, and you gain two charm. Catch the tail end of his classic Zoe, Zoe Calculuster exchange. But student X teacher fake is super overdone and makes me really uncomfortable because, like, the inherent and balanced power. Like, could you imagine how problematic it would be if PGS hooked up with one of us? Yeah. I cannot seem to recall what Principal Giant Spider looks like anyway. M, M file PGS not found. Ah, uh, the joys of new students adjusting to the rules of Spooky High. You there! Kill a machine and abyssal terror! Um, rude. I need an impressive ally in my fight against the reign of the Levees over the eighth circle of hell. Input qui quippy response about your sense of passion being from the eighth circle of hell. I have no need for your robo criticisms. What I need is the power of a of a being beyond the average monster to aid in my glorious and rightfully righteously justified takeover. No thanks. I'd rather just write a steaming fanfiction in which you and Damien are are a crack ship who hate sex just to annoy you for annoying us. We need to act now while well, King and King LaVey are distracted by throwing an admittedly adorable themed brunch. I'm not leaving without one of you with me. Holy shit, she really means it. Time to help one of your classmates out. Guess you better decide which one you don't like. School is full of tough choices. Dahlia, don't be fooled. This Eldritch being is clearly under Damien's spell. Look at all these pictures she drew of Damien's shirtless. She's a LaVey sympathizer. No, calling this robot a killing machine is inaccurate. A real killing machine would be a tank. He's not a tank, so he's worthless. Go look for a tank. She's a LaVey sympathizer. I mean, look at all these hot pics of Damien. Whoa. What? She's drawn hundreds of these. <laughs> yes, yes I have. Girl Damien from Spooky High. Pirate Damien from Spooky High Seas. Dr. Damien from Spooky ICU. Why are they all so... so compelling? <laughs> because Damien is a spi spi spicy red sex bot. He does look very... No, Dahlia, snap out of it! The Levees must be destroyed for their arrogance on and monopoly on hell. Pervy Abyssal Terror, you're out. Let's go, kill a machine. <laughs> Error, label kill a machine, inaccurate descriptor, found, file, friendship with Damien Levee. Seriously? With the amount of violence and arson he commits, you would think someone in this school would be willing to betray his family. And when I find such a student, whoa, she's a wicked. The wicked in this case being the reign of the Levees. <laughs> Thank goodness she's gone. Now we can start another Dahlia pick. What do you think, Green? Damien or Dal or Dal or Dahlia is their ship name. Those definitely just look like misspellings of their actual names. A resident tell Zoe that you enjoy her enjoyment and gain two fun and one boldness. Um, to the auditorium. Right they will rehearse for the class play, it's as though the muses themselves descended to give you a figurative blowjob. Your performance is intense and inspiring. It will be remembered for generations, which is pretty rad by high school play standards. You get into creativity. 
You see Zoe talking to Polly and Scott. You weigh your respect for your privacy versus your insatiable ambition to smooch your classmates, and always, there's a clear winner. And then I obliterated all population within the Navala realm, and to date, most of their souls live in, within my body in utter despair. Hmm. Whoa, Zoe, it used to be- it, it sounds like you used to be hell of a prankster back in the day. You betcha. I was what you'd call in this realm, the shit. You remember yesterday's episode? Or not yesterday's episode, uh, the last episode. I wish shit was yesterday, but I don't have that consistent of an upload schedule. But uh, I don't know, that wasn't entirely me. I mean, it kind of felt like it kind of was for endless millennia, but I never felt as myself as I feel now. Does that sound stupid? Great. No way. As cool as the gourd sounded, nothing is cooler than feeling happy with yourself. Word. Ah, oh, guys. Nonsense! Oof. Hey, Leonard. Anything to add? Of course, I overheard you talking about how precious is for is for you to have turned from a disgusting huge thing into a high school girl. What a surprise. Hmm. What? Yeah, yeah, now it's so hot to be a minority, am I right? An endless deity of despair that has turned into a ghoul. So brave, so unique, so bullshit. Change is so hot now, huh? People changing their identities, my childhood cartoons changing their art style, for changing his gender, even the climate is allegedly changing. Mm. What's next? Should we change our ideas? Should I change my clothes from time to time and lose my signature smell? Uh, to quote the great Nezaru Gaiman, you should change the status of life from alive to dead. Maybe? No, no, and no! I, Leonard, should be the last bastion of hope for the new com for common sense before the we, the majority, become the new minority. I will fight this fight by being super obnoxious and by reminding you that you are not brave at all, unlike me, who is super brave because I will literally never empathize with anyone else. And you can't change my mind, because I fucking hate change. You totally know Zoe is capable of defending herself. Uh, but if she does, her wrath might damage reality severely. Also, stand by your friends is the right thing to do, so you defend change in terms that Leonard can understand. Leonard, but you only buy your, vid your video games once their prices have changed when they go on sale. Leonard, as you seem immune to rational thinking, I challenge you to a Pokemon duel in order to change your mind. Let's see, smarts versus fun. Alright, Pokemon duel. Ha! What a noob! You stand no chances against me, the almighty Leonard. For I am the best at playing the video game Pocket Humans, better known as po Pokemon. Uh, apparently you're also the best at unnecessarily long and overly expositive explanations. Shut up! And you, Green, you're so hopeless that I will let you choose the type of fight. You decide for your Pokemon in the fight to see who's the best at doing their taxes. Both Pokemon grab their ca best calculators and start going through all their yearly expenses, trying to be as creative as possible. Unfortunately, Yoshigifumi Yoshi Yoshinari is so creative that he basically ends up going to d jail for committing tax fraud, which disqualifies him from the duel. Yeah. Oh no, bro! Dang. <laughs> you never stood a chance, you weak cuck. My Tobias Taxmaker Taxington's tax skills are unparalleled. You ask Leonard how he's got such a strong finance type Pokemon. Oh well, I got it when he was just a Toby Smith and trained him to maximize his tax branch of skills. When I finally married him in a progressive marriage with Re Rebecca Taxington, he changed his last name and evolved into, into Tobias Taxmaker Taxington. Ooh. He evolved? Yeah, you spectral skank, he evolved as in achieving his ultimate form. Don't you know a thing about Pokemon? So, evolved as in changed? Um, hmm. Ah! What just happened? Green got Leonard in his own, in his own pride and taught him a lesson for the language of Pokemon. Ooh, it sounds cool. It was definitely cool. Thank you, Green. You all hug and it's the sweetest thing ever. Later in your secret lab, you distill the sweetness in the free charm. Um, sure. Hello, Zoe. Hello, Scott. You sit down, Zo Scott and Zoe, just as Zoe cracks open the Tupperware she brought for lunch. You're not sure what's inside, but it sounds like it's screaming. It Whoa, Zoe, what are you eating? Is it pizza? I love pizza. <laughs> no, Scott, it's not pizza. I'm on a special diet where I only eat sanity. Oh, sanity. I bet that's chock full of protein. Mm. Eh, not really. It's mostly chock full of horror. It's better fresh, but that's a lot messier. So when I come to school, I pack leftovers in this Tupperware instead. So smart. What does sanity taste like? Well, 
You know, when you're sucking the marrow out of the ethereal bone fragments harvested from the carcass of a rival deity, you sleep? I don't think I've ever eaten a rival deity. Do I have a rival deity? Is it fireworks? I hate fireworks. No, no, no. Let's see. Have you ever drunk a child's tears filtered through its mother's severed, severed scalp while an orchestra plays a tuneless melody on instruments of flesh? I've had pizza. Is that close? Not really. It's more like cashews. Cashews and shrimp. Oh, cool. I knew it was high in protein. Can I try some? Can I? Well, it's not really for mortals. But Scott looks so excited, you've got to figure out a way to resolve this situation. Scott, sanity is extremely high in cholesterol. Why don't you just eat some cashew shrimp smothered in this mag maglamate insanity hot sauce that I brought? Well, this Scott uses this crazy straw. Malignant insanity. Oh no, cholesterol, the original C word. And also eating insanity would cause your brain to invert, mutilate it in like a thumbless chimpanzee angrily peeling an orange. And that sounds sort of bad too, but what I'm really worried about are my arteries. Hey, cashew me, bro. Happily oblige. One cashew, shrimp, and weaponized hot sauce cocktail coming right up. Oh wow, this food looks like a tiny crime scene. Down a hatch. And that's a lot of hot sauce, Scott. Are you sure your mortal mouth can? Oh. My mouth exploded. It caught on fire and exploded. No more mouth for Scott. No, Scott, I can still see your mouth here, but I can't see my mouth. And whose mouth is it supposed to be? Mine. So if I can't see it, it's not real. Uh, okay, dude. Sorry, can't talk. My mouth exploded, so I don't have a mouth anymore. Scott sits quietly for the rest of the lunch period, growing progressively redder and sweatier, while you enjoy a nice time with Zoe. Nice. Um, sure. Day, while rehearsing for the class play, you are struck by the lightning of inspiration. You come up with the ultimate nickname for yourself. You tell everyone to call you by it. Also known as one of the most seven douchebaggish moves by in the world. But the nickname is so awesome, inventive, and appropriate that some people decide to go for it. Quite the feat, you gain to creativity. We, the devs, dare you to actually come up with a nickname for yourself and ask the other players to call you by that name until the end of this run. I unfortunately do not have anyone with me at the moment. Later, you hear some discordant chants, so you go to see what's happening. Oh, Zagor, rule of the Dark Realm, it's time to bring despair and doom upon this dimension. Gee, stop it, for the last time, I'm Zoe now. Can't you respect that? Is this a test, our unholy awfulness? Are you testing our faith by forcing us to use false names? Our faith is strong, almighty Zagor. We will pass the test. Zagor is almighty, for it reigns the Dark Realm, and it will bring the void into this puny reality. Hey, what's happening here? Stop it. Bad cultist, leave Zoe alone. Vera smacks the cultist with a rolled up newspaper until they leave. Thanks, V. They're the worst. Don't always call me that name, Zagor, and referring to me as it. Sure, no prop. Hey, bro, excuse we heard what those cult bros were saying. Is it true that you used to be that Zagor, bro? I guess so, in a way. But bro, the cult bros told us everything about you. They said we're good cult material. Except about how being pack minded is a great start. But, but... Why would you go from being a giant monster to a little girl? That's so weak. <sighs> because I didn't feel like myself. It wasn't who I truly was. Ugh, that sounds complicated. Princess. Don't listen to her, she's lying. She obviously did that shit for attention. Now everyone changes their pronouns and identities like they're just hats. You know what? I identify as an attack helicopter. Insert Gianni Machugano's clip. I identify as not funny. Hehe, <laughs> see what I did there? I made a clever and original joke to prove that prove I think something that's important to you was stupid to me. You can't handle my nuanced humor. <sighs> Vera says nothing. She just stabs Leonard. Ah, oh, that was sweet. Think again. Sure. You know, we're sisters, not sisters. No, really, why would you change all that? Like, you also change your name, even your pronouns. Mm. Ugh, I really want you to understand, guys, but explaining it all the time is starting to feel like a chore. So, anyone else? Don't look at me, my thing is stabbing. So, it's your turn. 
You sometimes aren't born in a way you truly feel like yourself, like you were born as individual werewolves, I guess, before becoming a wolf pack. Produce a dumb action blockbuster full of explosions that unexpectedly serves as a metaphor for the nuances of identity and transitioning. You go into full producer mode, and because time in this world doesn't seem to follow log logical rules, soon you have a version of the movie for all of you to watch. It's called Fast and Furious and sensibly conscious of the nuances on gender identity and transition. You all gather a projection room alongside some of the investors who have given you millions of dollars to produce this movie, unaware as they'll just to convey the message to the wolf pack. Wow, Green! I would have never imagined a movie within the Fast and Furious franchise could be so thoughtful and invite us to look beyond the traditional binary spectrum of gender. Yeah, Broski, so many rad explosions! They were so sick that they made us understand how all this identity stuff is relevant to Zoe. And what about the fight scene at the docks? Absolutely, it was so violent and suspenseful. It's like it's like the whole scene beat the comprehension and acceptance right into us. Great work, Green. An insightful movie that caters to the big audience. Admirable. Let me show you my appreciation by offering you free services as your lawyer for all the contract stuff for the movie. Thanks a lot, really. It's very thoughtful that you're trying to spread a message of acceptance and understanding through the vastly well-known language of Fast and Furious movies. All of you are super happy. Later, you realize Vera has signed all the papers in such a way that she now she is now the owner of the movie. She makes millions and gives you just free money. But hey, you've done a good deed and helped many people like Zoe to be more understood and accepted. Um, sure. Not dead, you skip class and just hang out in the bathrooms because you respect no authority. I guess some people just want to watch the world burn by skipping class and hanging out in the bathrooms. You give zero shits, but you gain two boldness. Ain't no party like a spooky high bathrooms party because spooky ba high bathrooms party has Polly's high quality toilet wine! Yes! A classic part of spooky high life. I love it. It's so good to be a part of things. Ugh. I wish more people fought like you, Zoe. My WC wine isn't the, isn't the hit I thought it was going to be. Maybe it's because you're brewing wine in a toilet. Mm. Nah, that's not it. Thank you. Next. Trick question. There's no reason it can't be a bestseller. If you believe in yourself, you can achieve anything. Even selling unsanitary alcohol to 20-something-year-old high schoolers. Especially that. In the end, doesn't WC just stand for a we can? Honestly, we don't use the abbreviation WC in Monstropolis, so fuck it, maybe, I don't know. I'm all for using deceitful marketing schemes to trick gullible people out of your money regardless of the quality of what I'm selling, so I'm in. Oh my gosh, yes, I know all about spending too much money on things. You have no idea how much money I spend. She owns all of Evangelion on DVD. Of course I do. I monitor the bank accounts of all Spooky High students. What? What? Continue, by all means. Okay, anyway, wherever I buy things for ex exorbitant prices, it's because I'm incredibly invested in the people or characters associated with it. She also owns a Gar Garfield Omnibus. Like paying... Like paying $3,500 for a custom figurine of my human Sona from the game Monster Prom. That's it! We need to create a mascot for my WC wine. Who could get everyone emotionally invested in spending those monster dollars? Invent a cute cuddly character to hawk your product. Wally the Wasted Ra Walrus. Get an endorsement from millionaire mummy and trendsetter Chad Chaddington. Wally the Wasted Walrus. He! He sounds adorable already! One day I'll be able to do that squeal. For now it just sounds like I deflated a balloon. Yeah, let's find a really great artist to... To, de to design Wasted Wally for us, and then we can pay them in exposure. No, Scott, they are, will be a valuable investment for Polly's wine business. So I will happily finance this endeavor, as long as I get a cut of the profits and the artist gets paid, because all artists should always be paid. And they can have all the free toilet wine they want. I'll put that in the ad I'm posting. Really? No. I think this is one situation which is better than the, better than that 
better than the artist hired and does not sample the product first. We hired classmate Vincent Viperfish, a monstrous half-snake, half-barracuda to do the art. His art was amazing, which is really impressive considering that neither his viper lineage nor his fish lineage gave him hands. But you know better than ask logic questions at Spooky High. Before long, Vincent Viperfish masterpiece is complete, and the gorgeous life has been breathed into Wally the Wallers. He's so amazing! Do you think he'd want to join sports team with me? His muscles are beautiful. He's fictional, Scott. Oh, do fictional people not like sports? No time to explain basic concept, concept Scott. My WC wine is flying off to proverbial shelves and literal toilets. No time for proverbial shelves, Polly. My phone is ringing off to proverbial proverbial hook with people who want to make a Wally -E TV show, a Wally -E musical, and that thing above all else is the pinnacle of artistic media, a multiplayer dating simulation starring Wally -E the Wasted Rhinos. Wally -E the Wasted Wallers. I almost called him a rhinoceros. I mean, that would that would be even funnier. Wow, a multiplayer dating sim? Sounds lucrative. And it is. You get free money because because your mommy made you negotiate for a percent of profits before Wally -E Problems really, was released on smoke. Thanks, Greens, Mama. Um, sure. Hello, Dimitri. Wait, Dimitri's to here? Doesn't he have somewhere better to eat lunch, like a new banquet or a Tim Hortons or something? Uh, I can see the confusion writ upon your face, and I can assure you, I am not here to indulge my palate in the delicacy that is. Sloppy monster fries. Dimitri pulls out a clipboard and a stack of pamphlets. I am here on a recovery mission. Tell me, have you ever considered the benefits of joining the dark side? It pays great, whatever you can steal. We have a killer dental plan, things included. And the upward mobility is unbelievable, because your superiors will be constantly killing each other. Plus, you get to go to bed each night knowing you helped make the world a little less safe. Give this Dimitri a disapproving look and point at your dare t-shirt. Oh, you've gone through dark arts resistance education, have you? Well, let me sweeten the deal then. How about a free trial of one dark side perk? Sure, what's the worst that could happen? Ask him to explain. The art of monologuing about your evil plans in great detail when you have your enemies trapped in a compromising position. How to rock a cake. Okay, I'm only going to explain this once, so pay close attention. The correct way to rock a cape is, and this is very technical, so please focus. The only correct way to rock a cape is like this. Dimitri stands there shirtlessly, his cape flapping in a breeze that no one else can feel. Are you taking notes? This has taken me literal centuries to master. Oh, you're taking notes on, right? If by notes you mean pictures of sexy shirtless Dimitri overlaid with various compromising snack chat filters. I'm afraid that must conclude tonight today's lesson. I've learned from long experience that rocking a cape for an extended period can cause onlookers genitals to explode. Until we meet again, my real acolyte. Oh, and never put your cape in the washing machine. Air dry only. Otherwise, it bunches up and looks like an enormous diaper. And now my dramatic exit. Dimitri vanishes in a cloud of purple smoke, like always. You, shall, you sell the shirtless pics of him to Zoe in exchange for four charm. That day, while rehearsing for the class play, you totally forget your lines. It's terrible, but you don't let you get you don't let that get you down. You start improvising all your lines, and it's marvelous. Somehow, it enhances the pathos of the play in unexpected ways. I'm not saying something. Since half of your improvisation is a rap battle against your inner fears, you get into creativity. Zoe approaches you, looking full of joy and excitement. Hey, yeah. Green. Monster Prom is so close that I've, been, that I've started looking at dresses. Look at this one. Don't you think it'll totally highlight the sliminess of my tentacles? Stop right there, you purple tentacled fake idiot! Mm. Oh, hi, Leonard. You can wear as many dresses as you like, that, but that won't make you a real girl. You aren't fooling anyone. Dude, my identity has nothing to do with convincing anyone. I'm gonna wear a dress because I fucking want to. It's about me, not about you. It has everything to do with me. What if I finally meet a real gamer girl and she turns out to be an insidious faker like you? Just... wow. Shut up, you as a guard, you... Dead naming me and insulting me all on one word. Boy, that imaginary real gamer girl sure is lucky. I really tried to not let jerks like you get to me. 
But sometimes I wonder if I shouldn't just turn your kidneys into rabid raccoons if only to save people from listening to your harmful bullshit. Well, that's offensive if you're attacking my freedom of speech. It's my freedom to insult people and make everyone miserable. Oh, poor America, you don't have what Canadians have. We don't have freedom of speech, but we do have protection against hate speech in the criminal code. So, you could say pretty much if you want, but if you are an asshole, you will be punished. Hey, noobs. Hey, noobs. What's up? Oh, Damien, good thing you're here. Tell the stupid faker she can't call it. She can't stop us from insulting anyone or calling her Zagor or whatever we want to call her. Damien carefully lights Leonard on fire. You fucking just SJWs are always so offended by everything. Die! Well, Damien, thanks. I thought for a moment you were joining him. Eh? No, fuck. I might be an asshole, but I'm not a bigot. And struggling with defining yourself? That's harsh. Damn. Like, who should I be? A violent hell commander? A talented hairdresser? Sometimes I feel like the reason I'm so angry half the time is because everyone ex expected me to be this or that. Even myself. It's like, I don't know, I'm not good with words, and I know your thing is different, but it's like... The whole endless despair deity thing is very metal, sure. But exploring your own truth and fight, fighting to define yourself in your own terms? Fuck, Zoe, that's twice as metal. It's pretty damn admirable. <laughs> Damien. But before you can keep going to this emotional moment, someone else appears. Oh, Zigord, our awful, our sacred awfulness. Here you are, still trapped under this deceitful form. Let us perform a ritual to free you from that puny carcass. Not again. Do you want me to light them on fire too? No, it's useless. They keep coming and coming. These idiots are by the thousands at least. It's my punishment for spending millennia to torture tormenting morals, I guess. Damien was all hot and sensitive back then, but now it's your time to shine. If only you could make, come up with a plan to make the cultists leave Zoe alone for good. Don't let this puny tentacle mortal girl dis to deceive you. Because the Gord is really trapped inside this ancient totem. You need something that satisfies their need for mindless adoration and pack behavior. Introduced in the K-pop. She's trapped inside this t ancient totem. Oh, are you implying that this was once again a trick by our omnipotent awfulness? Sure. Ah, but we knew all along. We were testing you. Sure. What? Do they really believe I'm inside that Evangelion figurine? Guys, guys, in order to free the almighty Zagor, we need to learn more about how this magic totem works. Let's do some research. Here, this is a documentary about this totem. Watch it. You can also find lots of lots of internet forums discussing its hidden meanings. It will surely lead you to the answer on how to free Zagor from the totem. You're a real sicko, Green. They'll be trapped in the into the torture of Evangelion's countless layers of subtext and hidden meaning. There's no going back from there. What are you talking about? It's just a sick anime about robots killing angels. What's so what's complex about that? Damien starts to look it up on his phone. <gasps> what? So the AT field is in reality a metaphor for- No! Stop it! Zoe get grabs Damien's phone and throws it like super far. <sighs> what the fuck? I just saved you, Damien. Repeat after me. Once you go into Evangelion's countless layers of subtext, there's no going back. What ifs? Wanna grab some sushi? Oh, OMG, yeah. yes! No more cult member doesn't annoy me and sushi? Today's the best day ever. Thanks, you two. Ugh, I know, right? Spend the rest of the day eating sushi and discussion of, uh, discussing Evangelion in the shallowest, therefore safest, way possible. Like which battles the Radis won and how sexy Misato and Kaji are. You're getting too fun in one creativity. We oh, asked yes, Zoe. <laughs> um, sure. Hey, yeah. hey Green. Hey. I wanted to tell you again. Thanks for everything. Yeah. Sometimes it gets hard with people with some people being so hateful. I don't understand why most of the time. Hatred takes so much energy and it serves no purpose. <laughs> but it's okay. I believe people can change, and each time I find acceptance, it restores my faith in monster kind. I'm a girl. I'm at Spooky High, and I'm surrounded by people who love me. One minute here already feels better than countless millennia of being a deity of despair. Spoiler I think alert, you I think I'm living my best life. Life continues. Lots of things happen. Sometimes good, sometimes bad. But it's all in all good, because you and Zoe have each other. You sometimes get so focused on getting some monster ass that you forget that life is more than that. No one gets to tell you who you are. And you forget that even if they are criminals, arsonists, or dictators, these monsters are your friends. Sure, they have some pretty nasty flaws. There's always time to change and grow. 
In the meantime, you're grateful to be on their good side and to create new memories together. Green, most likely to mar marry a zebra. Zoe, I'm looking forward to the sequel. Those three weeks were maybe the most epic and absurd weeks of our lives. After the monster prom, we kept on living our lives, falling in love, battling for friendship, and learning about who we were and who we could be. And you know what? Like it always does, life happened, and it was wonderful. Zoe's many years of research and obscure trivia for her steamy fanfics paid off. She got a job as a consultant in a company who makes fantasy sex toys based on beloved pop culture characters. Now she rakes in the big bucks designing blueprints of stuff like the cock of the de Demogorgon or the vagina of the Statue of Liberty. Damien found peace in the most unexpected way. He kept punching everything until one day he punched his own anger to, to death. He's written a book about it. Vera realized she was a character in a video game, which infuriated her. She spent her life making connections and building power, and building power because she's not part of, a ga of the game, she plays the game. So be careful, maybe now she's the one pulling your strings. For those re three weeks, the monster problem seemed larger than life, and it was gone, just like that. The battle for Monster Prom might have ended then, but there are plenty of battles left in that world called youth. But once again, we are young and unafraid, and we are ready to start. And that's our episode. See you next time.